Alright, fuck yeah! And it's gone. So you like the Timmy Hoes then, eh? You seem uh, like you knew your shit. Tim Hortons? Oh man, like yeah, we end up going there at least a few times every time we're here. We actually were just there. Right after we hit the border. Right? Yeah, that's so like... Coming in is always a drama when you have like uh, a... Pulling a trailer. With, yeah, man. Uh, a lot of unmarked black cases. Yeah, we finally got our manifest thing right this time. It's called like a carnet. Carnet, yeah. We, yeah, we have this whole book. Last time, it's not a problem coming in as much as going back to the U.S. They're like, where'd you get all this stuff? Like, you could have bought it here, I guess. And you yeah, have to yeah. Pay taxes. But yeah, I've, I, it, it, like as if that's the latest scam. Yeah, yeah, you know? totally. Yeah, that's become uh, more and more of an issue every time getting in here. Just the more gear we bring. But we did it. Do you always go to the same Tim Hortons? Always, yeah. <laughs> and well, because it's the only one with a drive through that's like reachable. Plus, it's a oh, good nice. like 15 minute drive. Oh, so, perfect. otherwise, it's going to be like coffee stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, there's one everywhere here, right? Yeah, so you're playing tonight and you're just getting here, you're just loading in. Yep. Yeah, we got here a little late, so there'll be, be a little bit of a rush, but I'm sure we'll be on time. I can't yeah. tell you how refreshing it is to see an electronic act that shows up with a van load of gear. <laughs> <laughs> it's such yeah. a rare thing here. Yeah, man, we actually had to, that trailer, we got it like the day before we left because our old trailer this is kind of like a whole uh, new production, so we, we, uh, we had to get a bigger trailer. Which we're already out of space, so we're probably gonna um, ditch that after this tour is over. Alright. Oh, that's an interesting move right there. <clears throat> yeah, you must have about a semi's worth or two of lighting stuff. Um, yeah, for, well, for the full production shows, yeah. Um, yeah. And this next one we're working on is just, God, it's insane. 15 trucks. Wow, man. And, um, I can't get into detail about it. It's all been hush hush for the last like we've been working on for like about two years now. Oh, cool. And uh, we're we're shooting for maybe next year. You work with a lot of video guys. Yeah. Um, just kind of our own team, you know. I always like there's always this like, oh, what team you use? And then there's Velo, and, and you know, and then you kind of get these like posse's yeah. that everyone uses. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to stay away from that. And just kind of do it. Nice. Like kind of proprietary exercise. Yeah, I went, uh, we played, you know Derek from Pretty Lights? Yeah. yeah, yeah, We played a couple shows with him and I saw his, kind of, the way their production goes down. It was, it was intense, very involved. Right. But it wasn't 18 tracks. <laughs> it's crazy. Do you guys bring your own sound system? Um, and more often than not, no, because uh, we fit our production in with uh, a festival rig. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, like yeah. a fly-in rider kind of thing. And then, um, what we did when we had, we did solo shows. So, you know, we would have like an opener, like I, we brought Skrillex and Zed and all that, and then uh, we, we did sound for that. Okay. And then we worked with um, Tony Andrews, and, sorry, Tony Andrews, uh, Function One guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really, really cool dude. He was a shit. Nice. Uh, he, he did a few of our shows. He just did our one in New York for uh, New York. So right. They got Function One at Hoxton, right? I think so. Yeah, I think I remember that was one of the first places we played that at. They have a few places in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, uh, I'm actually headed out that way soon, just to kind of go hang out. Sort of miss that place. Yeah, you used to live there, right? Me? Yeah. No. Or did she say you worked there or something? You're doing Flash out there. Uh, oh, one of the companies we're working with on the new shows based out of San Francisco. Oh, okay. Oh, I was talking about way back. I thought you used to spend oh, some time there or something. Um, no, not really. Yeah. Near Palo Alto. Up yeah. There. Okay. General Bay Area. Yeah. But I'm uh, I'm actually moving to San Francisco. I'll be there for uh, six months. Oh wow! What about uh, rehearsals? I'm not sure, but somewhere near that uh, a, a big hangar that shall not be named. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's uh, it's a good place, man. It's, uh, it's definitely grown a lot lately. At least the neighborhood I'm in, but yeah, it's pretty laid back. I just saw um, Jim Connor five. In, uh, in San Francisco, if you're if you're in the motorsport they, thing, they they just did another one. Ken Block. I saw the one where he did the 
Was that the one where he did on they closed down the yeah, Bay Bridge and all that? The whole yeah, yeah. Thing. I was like, get out of here. Yeah, dude. that was insane. I don't know how they pulled that off. <laughs> they had to shut down so much. I know, and I was like, I mean, yeah, okay, okay, they did you're it. You're crazy, but they were replacing that bridge, so they closed the Bay Bridge, and they must have done it because there's a new span there now. And they're knocking down the old one, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe he was able to get it while it was one of the days where, where they well, closed it, it anyways. Because there's no way, I don't think no matter how much you pay, <laughs> right. you're going to be able to close down the bay. Right? I know. Yeah, that was, that was a cool video though. See, it just, it, like it wants to, but... Oh, it's all... The head under, under this bridge? I'll see <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, man. What gears can you get a loose in? Uh, you get scratch like in third. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> man, those screens are crazy. Which? Is e oh no, okay. Those two screens on either side. I thought maybe the, uh, the speed of no, no, no. the attack was yeah, right? digital. No, they, they're, they're all analog. The good ones are analog. Just because. Because analog, bro. Yeah. It's got, a certain, it's got a certain feel to it. A yeah. certain look. Analog. You don't want the latency in digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shift on time. <laughs> so wait, this has like F1 paddles? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <clears throat> Actually, uh, I'm so glad I was able to do this tomorrow. I'm, I'm flying to England. Oh, cool. Right? What for? Um, to go check up on another car. Oh, nice. Yeah. They're building me a, a mono. It's like basically a Formula 3. Mm. And um, I have to go make sure it's to spec and test it before they finish the build kind of thing so it's like one of those and you can only drive that on a track or can you drive that on a city technically it is street legal huh. you can drive in the states you can't drive in canada yet uh, you can drive it in england just basically everywhere i'm not <laughs> which is awesome oh wow we're taking the scenic route i gotta get on the uh, garden there. So when do you when do you leave for that tour? Uh, oh God, um, not for a minute. Maybe in the new year. Cool. Uh, 2015. Just taking a break for a while. Uh, well, yes and no. Like taking a break from touring, uh, but now it's like I'm just like getting off like all this crazy India tour, Australia, all that, mm. and uh, kind of getting out of clubland for a while too. Uh, just over it, you know. It's like I really want to. Oh, are you playing a lot of clubs? To, well, yeah, you know. Is that when you do like a DJ set that isn't the full production? Exactly. Okay. You know, we, well, we try flying as much as we can, like um, some extra production, and uh, but these two like um, robots that do cool shit. But again, just that's it. They do cool shit. And it's like it's fun, <laughs> but it's a set. You know. Yeah. It's not. Um, I, you know, you just see people walking away from those typical club gigs, thinking it's like. Why did we spend a million dollars on two robots when, you know, like, honestly, you're still getting the same, like, hey, great set, bro, yeah. kind of thing, if you would have just showed up with two USB keys. <laughs> <laughs> what is, uh, what do the robots do? They, like, hold uh, Well, they're, like, uh, fa they're modified factory floor robots. They're pretty yeah. fucking big. They're, like, 12 feet. Wow. Like that. And they, uh, they have these two animatronic mouse heads on them, like the robots. Oh, okay, cool. And then they're, like, big puppets, but not puppets. Robots. What capacity venues are these? Um, just uh, we've we've done them at a festival here, and then one uh, nightclub in um, uh, Vegas. Oh, cool. So you know, three thousand and up kind of capacity. Nice. Can we not get on the garden from here? Surely. Oh yeah. We Working on new stuff? Music? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep some away uh, for a little bit. I got an album coming out. Blah blah blah. But what about yours? <laughs> we we just put it out. It just came out like a, a few weeks ago. Nice. Yeah. I did get that link. Thank you very much, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah, this was like uh, the first fully full band record, like recording the guys, and because we we toured the last record with a band and uh, just kind of. Just felt, I don't so know, it's so really a group effort now because I noticed the yeah. kind of uh, uh, the movement from you know Tycho to ISO. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Well, I mean ISO fifty, like the whole like visual side of things. I kind of just folded that into Tycho. Like all the visuals are in service of the the project now. You know the video and, and all that stuff. But uh, 
but yeah, those guys, um, I toured with Rory and Zach for, for a few years after, or a couple of years after Dive, so we, we just really liked the way that, that sounded like it kind of changed the songs in the live context, and I wanted to try to capture that on a record. It was fun. Like, so kind did of, you do a lot of live takes for the record? Yeah, everything's, everything's, uh, oh, you mean like live at shows or just? Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, the way that, you know, because traditional EDM, well, I don't know, not traditional, maybe oh, yeah. standardized EDM is just kind of a loop, repeat, listen, addition, okay, cool, print. Uh, you know, arrangement. Yeah, not yeah. Not so much uh, comp or um, right. performance. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's all, I mean, it's pretty much all analog and like pre, pre-midi stuff, so the whole thing is, is pretty much live takes, just kind of, most of the, uh, I, I, I almost do all my editing with audio, like I like to kind of treat, almost create like samples, you know, and run stuff back through right. here and get that, get that kind of sample sound. I do that too, just for the purpose of like, um, like, I, I love a good, sharp, enveloped kind of mob bass, right? Yeah. But you only hear that one good note, that maybe one time out of 16 bars, you know? But then you want that exact, like, where that uh, waveform starts. Yeah. And I guess how it goes in with the kick and the phase and all that stuff, you know? If you just let it freewheel on MIDI, you know, the oscillators are always running, so you're never going to get that phase yeah. alignment ever, you know, or you know, some weird universe where you have crazy luck. <laughs> but, um... I like taking the sample of the one that I like, and then you know, oh, you'll pitch shift that. No, not pitch. Shift. Okay, you'll just, just get one. If of it's each one note, yeah, one yeah. of each note, you know, just get the good. What what mode gear do you have that oh, that's uh, mini or that's mini? Oh wow, uh, you name it. You got a bunch of the new stuff. Uh, new stuff, old stuff. Yeah, I just got a midi mini. You heard of this? Uh, a mini midi. It's it's called a midi mini. Uh, it's a, a guy. You know Studio Electronics? Yeah. That guy got his start. Uh, basically like cannibalizing Model Ds for, for musicians and turning them into rack mount. So you take the guts out of them and put them into a 19 inch rack. And then you put uh, CV MIDI and, <laughs> and, uh, and like a bunch of other, like an LFO and stuff on it. Jesus Christ. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be a Zed. <laughs> oh, was he tripping? Oh my God, it was so cute. I just saw the beginning <laughs> of it. Uh, it sounds amazing, man, because it's different. They like changed, they tweaked a few things, and you have. I forgot they added like sync between one first and second oscillators and LFO, like a bunch of cool little add-ons that aren't in the mini, the old mini mount. Right. But it's the same. Everything's the same inside of the old. Are you chamber. following up on the sub thirty-seven? Yeah, man, I really want to get that. Me too. I play a little fatty on stage. That's that's what I use kind of the, as the stand-in for the mini mode. Um, so I think that one, from what I've heard, that has a better signal path. It seems like it'll be more kind of authentic. And I love duophonic sense. Yeah. Not because of the the du two poly thing. I find I'm really a little more creative with duophonic sounds. So you know what I mean? why are you just the nature oscillator? of the way that it works? Yeah. Okay. The playability of it. You know, when you hold one down one note, hit the other note, but the last one sustained. You, yeah. you make these kind of cool droney things. That rather than just playing a mono synth with a drone behind it, for yeah. whatever reason, duophonic is just like it makes it for me. Have you played uh, a monopoly ever a Korg? Yeah. Yeah, that's I that's kind of like my go-to synth, but that's like I guess you'd call it quadphonic, but it's like it's right. interesting the way that it plays like that. And right. You can also step through that. The note priority is fucking weird. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the weirdest synth ever, man. The arpeggiator is like almost like an analog sequencer because put it in poly mode it'll step through each oscillator so you can change the waveform and the, the uh, you can transpose each each note up an octave or down an, or up plus two or minus two right. so it's a, it's cool you can like create these like patterns out of, out of like nothing huh. yeah it's, a, it's an interesting synth. I've never seen anybody like do a recreation of it that's faithful so what's like your your creative process really uh, it's mostly just, you know, starting with like some simple melody, like uh, either guitar or, or mini moog mostly, and then uh, and then just kind of layering, layering out from there. But this time, me and Zach, we just went up, we got out of town, got went up to Tahoe and just kind of like sat around for two weeks just uh, grinding through ideas and stuff. So As one does when they go to Tahoe, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it, was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty good experience. We got a lot done in like a really short amount of time. So yeah, it was a, we, we changed it a lot for this record just because uh, 
it's kind of like more of I usually put the producer hat on a little bit later in the process, but the, this time I was. It this, feels more like a live jam. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, man. I don't know. Like, I have like three categories, maybe four categories of music. Like in general, you know, I'm not this guy that's like, oh, genre this. No, no, no. I mean, okay. To me, I got there's just fucking annoying music. You know, just shit that bothers me that I, you know, it just irritates me. And then there's like that kind of passive music that's just totally, you know, um, <laughs> like, you know, it's just completely passive. You know, it's like the the lobby music at the W. You know, yeah. you know, like that kind of stuff. And then, and then there's that in your face shit that's supposed to grab your attention that you can't help but listen to. And then you have that uh, that other weird zone, which is where I. Where I guess where your stuff falls in in my category, how I listen to music is that shit that just kind of resonates with you in a way. So it's not intrusive. It's not slapping you across the fucking face because it's just oh, it's so thick and yeah. you know it's just it just finds this kind of you know frequency within you and it just you know vibes with it. You know what I mean? Where it's not like you're not banging your head to it. You're not totally into it. It's definitely not annoying and it's like you know it's there. And that's kind of where I like music to be for me to listen to, not necessarily the way I make music or what I produce, because admittedly, you know, sometimes I, I just do things because it's what people want me to do. <laughs> like, I, uh, you know, I'll, yeah. I'll own that. But, you know, um, but because of that, I am grateful that I have the opportunity to do that because it also kind of gives me the freedom to do, you know, stuff that, you know, I like. Yeah. Well, plus, I, I feel like. Yeah, I was wondering what that must be like, like if you if you kind of forced into to doing certain things. But then at the same time, the engineering aspects of it must be, I don't know. For me, that's that's fulfilling a lot of the time, even if it's something. That, even if it's shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, that sounds. I got the sound that I wanted, whether or not it's like evoking some emotional response or whatever. It's like there's something there, and the beauties and like the, the kind of detail of it. Yeah. What? It, so do you like your new records? I heard. Um, What's that song you did with that vocalist? And you like put it out, you basically put it out and some guy like sang over it and sent it back to you. You didn't like, it was like oh, unsolicited. Uh, Chris James thing? Yeah, that was cool. Oh, that was just, yeah, you know, just me chilling, you know, working on a, a song. And, uh, but I tend to do these things like with a live feed, uh, live stream, so people would just watch me in the studio kind of thing. I always thought that was an interesting thing at the time um, because, you know, it's just, you, know, you follow these big, I hate the word EDM acts and stuff, and uh, they just pop, continuously pound out records, and there's really no that it's disconnected from the art of making such record. So I'm just like, hey, you know, if you really want to see what it's all about, and it's, you think it's something you might want to get into, well, then just you know watch this for a while and, and just see how annoying it is to listen to the same fucking drum loops over and over and over and over again until you get it right. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, seriously. but you get faster at it as you go and stuff yeah. like that. So the streams are incredibly boring. You know, at least on my end, I'm not sitting there. You're working on a kick drum for 20 hours. You actually work on the music while you have yeah. the video on? Yeah, How yeah, does that yeah. get like nerve wracking? Um, Knowing all these people are watching you fuck up. Nah, not really, because I get paid to do that yeah. live. Yeah, I guess <laughs> You know, that's in true. front of festivals and shit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I know it's all right. It's, uh, you know, I, but it's not give it all away, but, yeah, you know, yeah. just kind of, it's like having friends over. For, check this shit out. What do you whatever. use to sequence? Uh, I, I've actually, been known to dip in and out of this and that and everything, you know. Or right now, I'm actually just starting to fuck around with Bitwig. Oh wow, cool! Yeah. Is that out? Yeah, it just came okay. out, so I, cool. I, I I bought it and um, I, I tried the beta out, but it had some problems. I have this really weird exotic kind of configuration with like DoTech converters and you oh, know yeah. it's all Maddie and stuff like that. So obviously, the guys at Bitwig didn't have that <laughs> high up on their uh, list of uh, shit to fix yeah. for drivers. So then when they said, oh, well, you know what, it doesn't work with your drivers, but if you update your drivers, wait for the release, and then we'll promise you it'll work. And I was like, oh. How do you like it? Did you, like, did you come it's from It's interesting. Live? Yeah. Yeah. Live, well, and then Cubase, I use a lot of that. Okay. And um, are you seriously cutting me off right now? <laughs> the lineup starts that way. That's awesome. I've never actually seen someone try to butt in through a drive, <laughs> <laughs> drive through. Oh, like. uh, man, that's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. I, that that really looked interesting to me, just because like Ableton. It's a different workflow. So of course you go into it like with a like as a stumbling idiot trying to figure <laughs> yeah. out. You know what you want to do. You know, yeah. like, I want to change the velocity of a note. 
Okay, I, I know that in Ableton, when you pull up this little rack, you got like, you know, these things here, but it's not there on here. And how does it work with mouse button, keyboard shortcut? So obviously there's going to be a month of that. But in terms of engine and the way that the kind of, um, the inner, um, parameter modulation and stuff mm. like that. So if you load in a VST, you can add one of their parameter modulators, which Ableton totally lacked with some kind of, um, uh, it's like they knew you were coming. How do you get anywhere I, well, without this happening? No, they, move. Just they <laughs> move when the car goes, trust <laughs> me. And um, Ableton didn't have any, like, so if you load in a VST and you want to modulate like a filter cutoff where it didn't have filter modulation or something in that plugin for whatever stupid reason, um, you had no way to, you had to automate that. Oh, okay. Draw in the automation, you know. But it has all these really cool things that you could just modulate the modulation even. Wow. And uh, pick any parameter or any BST param and just, you know, go crazy with an LFO. And it's really good. Yeah. Well, of course, depending on how the BST was coded, if it oversampled. Yeah, I was, I just always thought of that thing as like potential vaporware, you know? Like, it, it seemed like it was supposed to be out for like two years or something. Oh, I know, I know. I remember following it. Like, so it's actually real. That's awesome to hear. Oh, uh, what's your poison, man? Uh, I think I'll just take a black coffee if they got Dang. it. All right. <laughs> what, no. So what do you get here? What's I get an extra large double-double, but that's me, and uh, I don't recommend that. Double-double espresso? D no, no, no. Just coffee. Cream, uh, sugar, basically. Lots but of coffee? I, but I think they put cocaine in it. <laughs> Yeah, man, I I actually chilled out on coffee a while ago. It's, I was just it was it was killing me, man. Do you but, want milk? Uh, no, no. <laughs> good. I get you milk. It's cool. Yeah, the uh, but then on this trip, I got back into it. We've been having to wake up so damn early. Hi, old Captain Martin. How can I help you? Hi, can I get an extra large double double in a small black? Extra large double double, okay? Yeah, in a small black coffee. In a small black. That's three forty. Thanks. Do they know you here yet? Nah. Well, they, I, I know your voice. Do that drive <laughs> no, I just mean when you come up or they're oh, like, oh, this guy gets... sometimes. <laughs> Dude, with the cat car. Actually, I've only ever been here twice. In oh, the, shit, the with the rap. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Actually, you're the first. Yeah. And I promised Tom Ford he would be the first. <laughs> well, guess what, Has buddy? he seen this? Sloppy seconds Ford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Poor Tom Ford. I want to get a camera that does these live. Uh, let's get an uplink to my server. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. Coffee. Is there live? Oh, there's not one back in the back. What a server? Did no. you used to do a? a, a I, camera, I saw one where yeah, it looked like I, there was angles. I put the camera in the back and tried angles, and then I just realized, wow, I, I hate editing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're literally what I do is I take the two uh, MPEGs off there and just stitch them and upload it. I don't even edit it. Cool. So, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I took my lawyer on. And then uh, I said, so do you have any legal advice for up-and-coming musicians? And then, like, the whole time she was talking, I just sped it up and then did the Meow Mix song. <laughs> uh, that's pretty good. She likes to talk. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I think that's what they get paid for. This, this guy's going through the drive-thru on a bike. <laughs> Look at me, this guy's yelling that, That's not him. legal in America. Try to do that, it'll kick you out. Go, in, go inside, eh? Oh, man. Are you from around here? Like, <laughs> originally? I, I, got, I gotta take this. Hold on. Oh, I don't know, we can't see it. It's funny scene. There's a, there's a guy on a bicycle. It's pretty good. <laughs> at the window, waiting for his coffee, and, and the guy in front of us is yelling at him. You do a reverse mirror with an iPhone. Hey, hey, you hoser. Someone's gonna honk in three. Two, one. Yeah, I want to get. I want to check out Bitwig. I use Reaper. You ever heard of that? I have. That's. It, Is I that used the to, Nullsoft? Yeah, it's guy? that dude, Justin yeah. Frankel. He uh, he started this company uh, after he, he sold Winamp. Right. It's really good, man. Is like, it? it's really really good. Like, I used to use uh, Cakewalk Sonar, and I used Cubase for a while and so messed around. Got all your old .bun files from. <laughs> yeah, I seriously I do. do. I actually had to dig some of them up for this record because I had a couple uh, sequences that I wanted to mess around with. I never ended up using them, but right. but yeah, it's it's really good. It, it's the problem is is it's really unapproachable. It's it's really technical and everything's kind of under the hood. It doesn't right. it doesn't open up right away. Oh, but, Reaper. Yeah, but, but once, you can get in. Oh man, it's so deep. It's like you can send the the routing's what's incredible is you can send anything from anywhere to anywhere else. And then like the 
uh, parameter modulation it sounds like it's a lot like Bitwig. Like oh, maybe. I don't, I've not actually, I've only heard of Reaper. I've never actually even s seen it. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely not. It's more just like a tape machine. Like it's not oriented towards like uh, there's no looping or anything like that. Right. It's kind of just a big you know twenty track or whatever that you know whatever you want it to be. Which is great if you can play an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you so like all the, yeah, all those like con like like strobe like the intro to that? Uh, it's all hand drawn, dude. Wow. That's I, cool. You know, I like and and it's it's I, actually a little more impressive though. Well, because it's like. It is because you know, and it's actually kind of interesting because I just did a just an experiment called Seven, which was just a bunch of piano suites and uh, some kid and uh, and again I hand draw them and of course the MIDI goes. I have a MIDI controlled Steinway in the house and um, do you have any money? Oh yeah. Oh, I got US. They take it here. Oh yeah. They do. Oh yeah. Oh cool. Hi. Hi. What's up, Jack? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Oh my god, a neon cat. Car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that, that's yeah, see, that's the crack. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Look at this. Uh -huh. Thanks. There you go. Look at that. And he gave you Australian. Oh, no, oh it's, it's a new <laughs> Canadian flag. Thanks, man. Blazing. What? This coffee this is so hot. Oh, you can, you can here. Is there another one back there? Oh, nice. Front the front. That's good. I'll just take the uh, not 130 mile uh, an hour away back. Actually, that'd be good. I'll hold it if you're gonna take that. No, honestly, it'll be <laughs> everywhere I've tried. My detailed guy knows exactly where to go after I take it in. He's like, gotta take this thing off, get in there with a Q-tip. <laughs> Joel, stop drinking coffee in this car. Actually, we can take this all the way back to um, the Haxton. Haxton. So, yeah, I'm actually really stoked. I haven't been to a show in so long. Are you gonna make it? <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, that place is interesting. It's uh, This is the third time we played there, actually. It's that it's it's really funny because the crowd. Have you played there? Yeah, yeah, three times. This, the, the crowd is time. totally whoever's playing there, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, it's like every time I've kind of stepped into that place, and not to no disrespect, but depending on who they get in, man, that place can be full of fucking douchebags. <laughs> and then the next day, it's full of these little you know hipsters. And then, well, you know, it's like Mount a club, Kingdom I think. Comes in. Yeah, because like when we, I, the last, this time and I think the last time we have, they basically have to finish the show early because it becomes a club afterwards, I think, so I oh, think a lot of people like time? associate. Uh, I think we play, uh, I'll tell you right now. Like nine or ten? Yeah, probably something like that, it probably becomes a club. Like, oh, something. great, because I'm fucking over going out. <laughs> Late? Yeah, no, no. We we try it's to like, play well, most of our oh, shows pretty early. Yeah, Steve Aoki. Okay, I'm in town. You should come out to my show. I'm oh like, yeah, fuck yeah, I love you, dude. And he's like, yeah. Well, I'm like, what time are you on? He's like, two. Fuck you. Oh yeah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, no, nine fifteen. Sweet. Early show. Awesome. Yeah. Try to make it easy on the kids. Right. <laughs> yeah, the first time we played here was with we were touring with Little Dragon. You know them? Oh, her fucking voice. Yeah, you keep me knocking on it. She's the Holy best. Holy shit. What's that fucking song I love so much? Better? Uh, no. Uh, clap damn. Clap is the new one. No, no, no. It's a little older. Is it off of Ritual Union or the one before it? I think it was the one before it. Yeah, then that's like, uh, I mean, that song's just pure. pure she's like Japanese thing. slash Swedish? She's Swedish, but I think one of her, she said one of her, like her mom was Japanese. Yeah. Like that. Interesting, man. And yeah, she's amazing, man. Their voice. whole band is amazing. Uh, something, really something, should I stay or should I go? You know? Yeah, I don't know that one. God damn. There's a but Yeah, that song's wall to wall. One. Good stuff. Once. Once. Oh, that might be the album even before that one, then. It might be. Two like I said, it's pretty old. It's like yeah. about two or three years old. Yeah, the song's called Once. And it's fucking great. Music is amazing. Yeah, they're great, man. They, uh... I did a remix for them a while back, and uh, I'm working on one right now. It's like, that's the most, that's the only time I've ever really worked with vocals when it kind of felt right. Yeah, you know what, because I, I do things like this, uh, you know, weird, well not weird, but just, you know, music, music, and um, 
and not big room club format stuff. And I actually get a little freaked out about like, you know, when they're like, hey, we should put a top line on this. So, that's what, the, is that what they call it? Vocal yeah, a vocal, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, that's like big label top. For, it'll be number one, son. <laughs> top. Line. You'll be a star. <laughs> Fuck off. So, um, you know, and uh, I did do this kind of one piano y glitchy piece, and uh, they brought it across to Imogen Heat. And, uh, oh, yeah. And she came back. Was, she delivered. Uh, the op delivered, man. I was like, op delivered. Yeah, what's this guy doing? Come on. Dude. That's cool. Yeah, I've, I've wanted to work more with it, but it always feels a little like shoehorned in, you know, if it isn't the right thing. By the way, we're on a street. Really, you should have said. Yeah, this is Richmond. This is like the one way, kind of all the way to. But if I did, you'd be by that guy right fucking there waiting for me. Look at that. Oh man, yeah. Ding. Look at that. I ain't making no noise. It's the Honda. The Matrix does get on it, man. Four banger. <laughs> I don't know what happened, man. Would you believe a year ago I didn't have a driver's license? <laughs> really? Yeah, I guess so. you don't really need one in this city, right? No. Hey, thank you. You're the first person to not go, Really? <laughs> really? Oh my fucking god. Vanilla Ice made a whole episode about it. And I was like, fuck, man. It's <laughs> but you did one of these Vanilla Ice? just don't need it. And then uh, I didn't know how to drive or not. And then a year ago, I got my driver's license. And then it just went crazy. <laughs> That's good. Now I'm like even thinking like next level in it. And fucking start learning how to drive F2s and see if I can maybe one day get in an F1 and qualify. Man, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that would be... That, dude, I saw... A, it was like a helmet cam or something of that guy... Who's the guy they made the movie about? Senna? It was just so intense. Like, everything... It looked like it was... Yeah. Yeah, it's... Like, 10 speed. 10 times speed. Yeah, that was... That stuff's crazy. Rory's way into that. Our drummer, he's like way into F1. He follows it like religiously and stuff. So I'm always, him and uh, Evan are sound guys. So they're always like talking about homologation specials and all sorts oh, of right? shit. That, it's like, what are you talking about, man? But yeah, it seems interesting. We're going to, um, we have, uh, we're going to uh, Liverpool to do this thing so I can get in my mono. And then after that, um, we're flying over to Budapest uh, and we're going on the Hungora ring. His, your buddy would know what that is. What is it? It's like a? It's a circuit. Okay. And um, we have uh, we have a 458 Special, uh, a 458 Italia, and an F12. Waiting. Uh, what's the special? Gonna, what's the difference between that 458 and this? Uh, oof, uh, tons. Tons. <laughs> what does that designation mean then? What is that? That's just the factor. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the model number. Huh. I don't know. I wonder what the one was. The 457. I, you know, I have no idea. Yeah. It's probably the horsepower. Because BMW is like series and displacement, or like fuel injection. Oh, dude. Like what, five I, point I just like to drive. <laughs> I don't got no shit. I got the mechanic. I just see all this stuff from the back seat, listening to Rory go off about cars, so I yeah. pick it all up. Eventually, sure. it just turns into me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's how long you have to wait. Oh, I hope the camera doesn't unexpectedly die on me. It did that so many times. Really? Yeah, where it just goes deep, 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 and it shuts off, and then I don't even get to say goodbye. But I think we'll actually make it. Cool. We weren't that long. Yeah, it died in the vanilla ISIS thing, but that's just because the guy would not shut up. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, he's cool. That's he awesome. Was just, he's just chatty chat. Give me the whole history of Vanilla Ice? Florida. Oh. No, 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 no. No, he was actually really cool. He's a really knowledgeable dude. You know, he's 
wise in his ways now. You know, I, I'm glad I interviewed him now and not when he was 20. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he, uh, yeah, that was that was like middle school. You remember? Was he big up here? Dude, he was big. He's as big everywhere. Fucking China. Okay. Dude. I always like, wondered. Yeah. yeah no. Vanilla Iche. Didn't he race? He raced motorcycles or something, right? Jet skis. Jet skis. <laughs> yeah. Is jet ski racing? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. thing. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> Rule thirty-four. Oh yeah, you got Applies. involved. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so you seem pretty internet savvy, I've noticed. Oh man, you know I've been. Are you a B-tard or what? <laughs> uh, I was just a developer, and you know I started out doing like flash development and all that stuff. So. No uh, shit, me too. Yeah, yeah. Did you go to the flash in the can? Yeah, I used to do F I did Sean. Uh, Sh uh, Sean. Um, uh, yeah. And, yeah, uh, I used to do those every year. Dude, my, that was the first time I ever went to San Francisco. Was, um, we won a rubber arrow for our commerce site uh, at. Um, ah, damn it! Flash forward. Oh, cool. Yeah, the one that Sinbad hosted. Oh, geez. and it was in San Fran. Oh, no, yes. I wasn't at that one. I yeah. used them. I usually have just gone to the ones here in Toronto, and uh, and I did some in Am Amsterdam when they had them over there. Right. I used to do this whole like design circuit thing. It's cool. fun. Yeah. So, do you know Josh Davis? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah no, he's a I haven't buddy. seen all those guys in so long, man. It's a bummer. Oh man, that's so crazy. So, what did you what did you do? Like just scripting um, crap or cool like uh, visual type we, shit? We did. Uh, so I would create like every year, update it, and create like a new portfolio for my design work. And but but I'd like design these interfaces that were kind of like real world interfaces. And then I'd work with uh, my buddy Dusty Brown. He does like he would do most of the like serious coding stuff and uh, you know we would just work on the animations and stuff remember yeah. all the badasses oh yeah man like Eric Jordan too advanced yes too advanced <laughs> on that we, we still joke about that man that's like a that's like a perfect oh, uh, he invented arrows that point to fuck yeah. all yeah man I was that, like, that was needs more moving arrows buddy that got out of hand quick yeah, that whole yeah. that whole part of part of flash yeah those are the good old days though man internet early early flash mega days. car was the first um um the first flash based website I've ever seen. Really? Yeah, megacar.com. The old one that, that fucking Kim.com twat waffle did. Oh, really? Yeah, when they would basically deke out these, uh, these, uh, benzes with like satellite uplinks and all crazy, you know, 38 baud rate internet from your car. Oh, that's what it was? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but I think mega it was Mega, car. Mega, you know, was his thing. And now it's uh, Mega.io or something? Right, now it's Mega. Fucking good luck finding a country to live in that won't extradite <laughs> you and fucking throw you in jail for being a dick. <laughs> Look, it's not even about the piracy anymore. You're just a fucking asshole. Yeah. He got his house back though. You know he's back in that house in New Zealand. Congratulations! That they like fucking helicopter raid. Now you can start training for the next fucking yeah. uh, World yeah, Warcraft no takeover. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, man, that guy's hilarious. Oh, I like yeah, exactly. I was like the pirate. All right, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't even give a shit. You're just a dink. Yeah. You're a big dink. Oh, I should stop talking before my fucking server gets yeah. fucking DDoSed. <laughs> Whatever. It was worth it. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty fun episode. The drums. You get oh yeah, you get a DJI. Yeah. Oh my god, I just went to Henry's and um, ordered it. Hell yeah, those things are badass, man. Oh my god, when I was on my way here, um, the same cop was staring me down, and he's like, "Oh, this asshole." Okay. He's gonna. Like, oh, good, you this good just drives around all the time. Yeah, my buddy Charles Bergquist, he does uh, like. A, for the visuals, we shot some of it with uh, with a drone. And what are you doing tonight? Are you projecting? Yeah, we always just have a big projector at like front of house, and then a, the, the the problem with this place is it doesn't have a very big stage, so it's going to be a smaller screen. But yeah, basically we're kind of the, the lighting kind of is the projections that's on us. And right, we have like a minimal floor package. So yeah, it's just a bunch of video stuff. I worked with Charles. He did a lot of the cinematography, and then I just took it and kind of affected it. And actually, it you know what? This might actually interest you, this notion or whatever. And uh, when you do do it or get back into it, um, you can give me a credit. Uh, you know what? I was watching some videos from the 70s and stuff like that, of old parties and stuff like that. Someone's got to bring back that oil projection. Oh, we do that. Hey! Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah! Charles okay. used a red uh, camera 
and got like all this 4K footage. He heated up oil yeah. and he had, like water in this thing, and you'll, you'll see it. It goes basically through these like shapes. Honestly, when I get my Red Dragon fucking <laughs> finally, maybe one day in 2019 or something after the waiting list, that's like the first thing I wanted to do is get some really like 6K freaking oil yeah. projections. Check out Charles' stuff. He uh, he does some really interesting, and then he uses he'll use like a Phantom Flex and get super slow motion of it. Whoa. So it's like it almost looks like cloud. It's, it's, it's amazing, man. It's really pretty stuff. So I'll just take that and put it in like shapes yeah, and right, designs right. around it and stuff. That's cool. So you, do you think it, your programming background really helped out big time with the, uh, you know, kind of visual? Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, you know, just the whole like being able to interface with software easily and like pick up new stuff, I think helped a lot. Just getting into Premiere and After Effects, man, that stuff is deep. Like all right. the scripting and stuff in there. Yeah, you know what? Um, Josh Davis is actually playing around with his his own uh, framework now. Called, oh, cool! Called the Hype Framework. Yeah. Which is going to be like a uh, you know you know Greg Mahamanovic? No. He's here in Toronto. He owns a company called Derivative Inc. Okay. And they do uh, touch designer. Yeah. And touch office. That. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. we just passed his office. Like. Oh, that's the best man. I yeah. love that. No, 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 sorry. Touch Designer is um, oh, it's visual software. It's for like Windows a, only, I know yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, it's Reactor for Yeah, my DJs. buddy Willits uses that right. for his live show. Yeah, look, that's deep, man. You have to, like, design the interface yourself mm -hmm. every time. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, if you want to get something done. The only thing is I, I, I do everything PC at home, like my my workstation and stuff for the for recording, but I do... I can't. I don't trust it for live, so I just use OS X. All I use right, it. San Francisco. You ever heard of VDMX? <laughs> uh, I have not. It's like a modular. It's kind of like a lighter. It's basically like Touch Designer, but it bridges the gap between that and Resolume. It's like sort of modular, but right. sort of. You know, it has a lot of like kind of presets and pre-built stuff, so you don't have to dig so deep. But how is it under the hood? It's amazing, man. You can. I mean, for me, I'm not doing like generative stuff I mean it can do generative stuff but I'm not going too deep for the live show it's mostly pre-rendered and like I'm, I can just trigger different stuff at different times but for the most part it's like premiere renders you know so I, I don't need anything too and you intense. go down to like ProRes uh, for the what we're projecting right I think I'm doing 1366 now or something it's it's smaller no I mean, oh, like mean the, the, the format the oh codec. no no we, we use uh, I use uh, motion JPEG that's the best for um, or photo JPEG that's the best for visual software because it's referenced on a frame by frame basis apparently instead of like some codecs like H.264 look at like multiple frames at a time and the right. differences between them so you can't reference frames immediately it's, it's not as uh, as quick so there's like a little bit of latency oh shit dude sorry that's alright it Got comes off coffee. cool man we'll uh stop by tonight if you want to, we'll you can see. grab. Uh, no, I know, I know. You can grab wristbands I gotta, I gotta right now. Hook up. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. But I'll see you tonight for sure, man. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me. I'll, I'll, can you do me a favor? Can you direct message me the times? Yes, I'll send you the, uh, the set list Just, or the, uh, no, the set, set time. Send me the set list. Yeah, I'll send you the set list right ahead of time. Also help. You gotta get ready. All so right, I thanks, man. So we can know what to expect. Have a good one. All right, yeah, hey, thanks for having. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Take care, man.